G'day, I'm Paul. So when you think Lamborghinis, you think race cars for the road, but they've gone one step further with this car here. This is literally a race car for the road. It's called the Lamborghini Huracan STO. STO stands for Super Trofeo Omologata, which is effectively Italian for this is a road car of the Super Trofeo race car. Um, and it's expensive. It is about $600,000. This particular car has over $250,000 worth of options. So it's close to a million dollars on the road in Australia, which is crazy. This competes with things like the Porsche 911 GT3, RS, the Mercedes AMG GT Black Series. There really aren't too many competitors out there that take learnings from race cars and then stick them into a package that you can drive on the road. Um, today we're going to do a detailed review of this and yes it is very wet today so it's going to be interesting. Um, if you do want to skip ahead to other parts of this review you can use the time codes on the screen or if you're on YouTube you can scroll down and use the chapters below and if you haven't done so already subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so you can find out every single time we drive an Italian bull. Now let's talk design. So you have like 80 colors to choose from and some are actually free, which is nice. Um, the ones that aren't free cost from around $25,000 upwards and you can spend all sorts of money with the Ad Personum, uh, which is the customization program that Lamborghini offers. And there's just so many options on here that I'm not even gonna bother pointing them all out. So this car has over 75% of its panels as carbon fiber. In addition to that, they've used a windscreen that's 20% lighter than a regular Huracan Khan. They have all sorts of weight saving measures here to make sure that this actually adds up to being effectively a road going version of the race car. This is even rear wheel drive instead of all wheel drive, which is what you found on the Huracan Performante that came before this. So I love the design. Like when you see this in person, it is just on another level entirely. I mean, just have a look at some of this stuff. You've got these uh, sections here for aero that are all carbon exposed. You even have these giant ducts here that take air from this carbon splitter down the front here spit it out the top and then it runs over the car. It really is just a remarkable thing to see here in person. It has so much presence. I know that you could say that about any Lambo, but here in particular, this color spec and the way that they've designed this is just something else entirely. Uh, down the front here, you've got the Lamborghini logo. This is quite low, not quite as low as the last road going race car we tested, which was the Porsche uh, Cayman GT4 RS. GT4 RS was close to 100 millimeters of ground clearance. This sits about 20 mil higher. You also have a front lifter that helps lift the nose of this so you don't collect things because that's all carbon. If you crack that in half, it's gonna be all sorts of messy and all sorts of expensive as well. Love the STO there. You can actually get another of sticker packages and badge packages for this car to let everyone know that this isn't just a typical Lamborghini. Italian flag colors up the top there as well. Full LED headlights with an LED daytime running light and LED indicator built into there. Check out that exposed cooling unit down there as well. Come around to the side with me. These wheels are pretty special too. So it's a 20 inch alloy wheel, but this is a magnesium wheel. So again, weight saving, it means less unsprung mass on each corner of the car. You can even just see some of these details with those exposed carbon bits, sort of uh, allowing air to run through and out the top there. Uh, you've got two, four, five mil tires up the front here and a wider set at the rear that I'll run you through in a second. The brakes are absolutely enormous, just under 400 mil in size in terms of the diameter of that rotor. It's cross-drilled carbon ceramic, six piston calipers, as well. This car doesn't weigh a lot, it's under 1500 kilos, but it can generate an incredible amount of speed. And with all of this aero on it, it actually produces a little under 500 kilograms of downforce at 280 kilometers an hour. Has a top speed of just over 300 as well, just in case you're wondering. Um, over here, STO, this is one of the, the packages you can option with the car. It doesn't actually feel like a sticker. It feels like it's painted on. So that's sort of embedded in there for life. Love this sleek looking wing mirror too. Look at that, it is just a work of art. Look at this side duct down the bottom here as well. Now I mentioned the rear tires. So these are 305 mil wide. These are a race tire. So in the wet, these will be effectively not really doing anything. A slightly smaller rotor there, but still an enormous caliper on there. So it is an impressive looking braking setup. Look at this duct as well with that carbon section up the front. Then you can see the engine under there. That is such a stunning engine. It will be such a disappointing time when something like this doesn't exist anymore because this will be the last time they use a naturally aspirated V10 in one of these without some kind of uh, hybridization or electrification. So the next generation of this car will be an entirely different beast altogether. I'm gonna run you through what these are shortly, but come around to the back with me. 
I reckon this is the best angle for this car. You have an enormous carbon spoiler here that's manually adjustable, so you can adjust the tilt on that as well. I love that you can literally see pipes through there. That is open. I could put my hand in there and probably burn it somehow. When we were in Denver for the EQS SUV launch, there was actually a modified Lambo that was twin turbocharged and it kind of looked like this where the rear was exposed. This is such a cool look. You can even see that tire straight through there as well. It is just something else. LED taillights there, dual exhaust pipes, Lamborghini badge just here and a brake light built into there. Now I mentioned before the little key holes here on the engine cover and also down on the bonnet as well. They basically unlock this and there is a key that I'll grab out now and show you. It's located here just next to the driver's foot. So this is what actually what looks like a 3D printed key, which I absolutely love. It's super lightweight, feels like a sort of plastic or a carbon or something like that. This is basically the key that allows you to unlock the engine cover and also the bonnet down the front there. We won't take this off uh, just because someone has already damaged this. I don't want to damage it even more, but it is a two person job and whoever damaged it didn't listen to the instructions. So we'll overlay some vision of what that looks like, but I will get Sean your help. We're going to unlock this and open it. And in fact, it's very similar to my Humvee in the operation. So you put the key in, you turn that to the unlock position. Sean, I'll come around and do your side as well. Just the, not that I don't trust you, but I don't trust, you. trust you. Yes. <laughs> okay, so now what you do, you push down on it until it clicks. Then we lift this forward. <laughs> oh, that is so cool. Wow. Okay, so Igor, bring yourself around and come and have a look at this. Um, if it is windy, you do actually have one of these to hold this into position so it doesn't fly away on you. This is pretty cool. So you do have a storage space here. It's like 30 something liters. Uh, outside of that, there isn't much storage going on, but this is where the exhaust is after the air passes through that cooling system down the front there and it spits out over the top. This is also where you'll find a 12 volt outlet. They've got the car cover in here, but I suspect maybe you could fit a helmet in there or something like that. But I love this exposed crash structure down the front here. Like they really have just shown you everything, saved weight, but also just shown you what is going on under the front here. You can see the rest of that carbon weave through there as well it is just an absolute masterpiece. So very impressive. Um, Sean, let's come back and close this. I'll explain how this works. Okay, so we'll pop this away. Then we lower this back down. And then once it's back into its home position, you click it down and then I'll relock it so it doesn't fly open when we go for a bit of a spin. And Bob is your uncle. So let me know in the comments section below, what do you think about the design? Are you as enamored as I am with all of this? Because I reckon it does look pretty unreal for a car that you can legally drive on the road. Let me know in the comments section below. Okay, so we are inside the Huracan STO. Uh, we'll start off with the key. This is what it looks like. It's a bit disappointing actually. You've got lock, blank in the middle, unlock, and then a little Lamborghini logo there and Lamborghini etched on the back. Reason I think it's a bit disappointing is this is like an old Audi key. They sort of stopped using stuff like this ages ago. So it uh, would be nice to see a slightly more modern version of that. It's proximity sensing for the start button. So you can leave that in your pocket. And then to start the car, you lift this cool flap just here and hit that start button just there. It's metal as well, really cool setup. Now, in terms of the design, there is a fair bit going on here. So stacks of this Alcantara material, uh, not only on the steering wheel, but on the roof and also the dashboard there. More of that carbon, so you can see there, carbon here, carbon on the door panels as well. To reduce weight, they've removed things like carpet. So you get this sort of panel down here instead of like a, an actual carpet. Uh, they've removed like a door handle. It is pretty sort of sparse in here in terms of those features, but it sort of makes up for it being a performance car and all that sort of stuff. I love these um, color highlights here. So as I mentioned before, you can customize a lot of uh, the Lamborghini stuff to be whatever you want. And in this case here, someone's gone to town on orange and black. And I think this color combo looks sensational. Have a look at these uh, paddle shifters here as well. Proper cold to the touch metal. They're static. So when you move the wheel, they don't move with it, but they are so much fun to just grab hold of and just fire through. Drive modes is down the bottom of the steering wheel as well. In terms of your touch point, so this is kind of soft there, but pretty firm and very firm on the door. So when you are driving, it's not really overly comfortable to rest your arms anywhere. How soft are they? Well, we've got our durometer. We've tested the main surfaces in this cab. And if you want to see how this car compares to other cars that we've tested before, have a look at the link in the description below. Now, build quality, what's it like? So it actually feels quite nice and solid. Uh, a friend of mine has 
uh, Huracan, and, and it's actually been pretty reliable. It is effectively a Volkswagen Group product beneath the skin, so from that point of view, it's fine. And our door slam test, so you pull this little tab here to open the door. Despite it missing all the parts, it actually sounds pretty nice and strong. Now let's talk infotainment. This is actually better than I thought it was going to be. I thought this was going to be a bit sort of chintzy, but they've done a good job with it. It's an 8.4 inch screen. It is sort of pretty straightforward to use. You have inbuilt satellite navigation, and that is sort of okay. It's a little bit laggy there, but for the purposes of having satellite navigation, it's sort of okay. Uh, I'll talk about this a little bit more when we go for a bit of a drive, but this is your volume control just here. It's all controlled there on the screen. On the radio front, you have AM and FM radio. There's no DAB. Uh, digital radio there uh, and it's anyway it's a full speaker sound system and the sound system is quite frankly terrible so <laughs> not really missing out on too much there um, other functionality uh, i'll run you through the phone apps in a sec but there is actually a telemetry system here and that's what this camera plus the camera just behind me is for you could basically set uh, the track that you're at and it will then record your track laps it'll then overlay uh, information from the track drive that you've just done as well so i think it's a pretty cool setup and um yeah it's it's nice to see that you know if you are going to be taking this car on the track you do actually have the ability to record the fun that you're having without having to put aftermarket systems in place to to achieve everything you need to achieve on the smartphone mirroring front you do have apple carplay optionally available it's like a six ish thousand dollar option uh, so it's actually quite a nice integration so it takes up that full screen reasonably quick it does all the work that you need it to do head of the driver you have another digital display here it's nice and quick and very sharp as well when you do switch through the different drive modes everything changes there ahead of the driver as well just to give you a bit of configuration and customizability as well uh, so safety discussion it's going to be a short one because there really isn't that much in the way of safety features here there's no blind spot monitoring uh, no AEB or anything like that. You do have an auto dimming rear vision mirror. There are no front or rear parking sensors, but you do have cruise control, uh, not radar cruise control, just normal cruise control. Uh, and you do have a reverse view camera. I'll show you what that looks like. I'm going to fire it up for that, which I definitely don't hate doing. Pop that into reverse. It's actually not terrible. The uh, quality is not too bad. I can clearly see what it says on our suitcase there. So that's all sort of pretty uh, straightforward. And then in terms of our connectivity options, you have two USB ports here just behind the driver. One of those is the smartphone mirroring port. You also have a 12 volt outlet here as well. And what about your storage? Um, you do actually surprisingly have a couple of places to put things. So your phone can live in this little slot up the top there, although it does kind of fly out if you accelerate hard. You do have this slot down here as well. And there's also this one where it can go underneath this sort of center armrest thing. Unfortunately, with the STO, they removed the cup holder so your bottle was able to actually go into a cup holder that came out of here sort of Porsche style uh, but that is now gone so there is nowhere to store any drinks inside this car you do have a glove box there but that is positively tiny so let's talk uh, comfort so you have single zone automatic climate control you've got heated seats here as well which is all sort of pretty straightforward now there's an interesting story with the seats as well. So the seats look really cool. They've got this uh, custom design on them as part of that Ad Personum program, stitched Lamborghini up the top there, Alcantara through the center. They hug you in nicely as well, but they actually have a much better seat that typically comes standard with this car and it includes a harness as well, like we saw in the GT4 RS. The reason it can't be sold in Australia is because the airbag that's embedded in that seat isn't big enough for our standards. So you can see the safety nannies get involved in all this stuff, even though this is a race car for the road. Uh, they've stopped our ability to actually get the proper seats in here, which is a little bit disappointing. You probably have to switch them out for yourself if you do end up buying one of these. Seats though are electrically adjustable, so you can go forwards, backwards. Your backrest can go forwards, backwards. You also have lumbar support and an adjustment for the front and back of the seat as well. So they are pretty sort of comfy, even though the suspension is quite firm. And then uh, on the steering front, the steering offers both tilt and reach adjustment. And on our reach test, all of this stuff is easy to reach while you're driving. Okay, so we've just hit the road in the Huracan STO. Now, STO mode is kind of the road mode. It is the most civil of the modes. And as you can hear in my voice, <laughs> we're still bouncing around a fair bit. Uh, it is still pretty firm in that STO mode, but it's actually nowhere near as bad as I thought it was gonna be. The GT4 RS we had here recently was about as firm as this, and both of those are very extreme sort of uh, race cars for the road. I even love here, that little indicator just there, it shuts off cylinders to save fuel. Then when you lean on the throttle, 
you can hear them spark back to life. In fact, STO mode, I'd argue it's a bit too sedate. Like, right now we're in seventh gear at 50 k's an hour and I can barely hear a thing, so it is sort of pretty quiet. Um, I'll run you through the engine. So, under us just there is a 5.2 litre naturally aspirated V10 engine. It makes just under 500 kilowatts of power, which for a naturally aspirated engine is out of this world, and a little under 600 newton metres of torque. That's all mated to a seven speed dual clutch automatic transmission. I'll show you what that feels like when we roll to a stop. In fact, I'll put stop start on just so you can get a, get a vibe for this. So it's, it's too hot for stop start, but I'll just roll onto the throttle there feels really good. It is funny how the less you spend on a car, the more that it has a dual clutch, the worse it actually feels uh, at low speeds. But um, this is actually a really comfortable driving experience. Now, Lamborghini claims a fuel economy of just under 14 litres per 100 k's. Um, we're sitting on 18.7 there in the corner. Um, we have, just because of the rain that has just started here, we actually filmed a lot of the faster driving earlier today, and that fuel economy I think is pretty impressive for what is effectively a race car for the road. In terms of road noise, it is very noisy in here, especially on course chip roads. Uh, we've used that calibrated sound meter to get a reading, and yep, it confirms that it is quite noisy, but it is what it is. It's pretty much a race car, and you shouldn't expect anything less. Okay, sine wave time. Let's crank the speed up to 130. Maximum speed in Australia. It's a speed we test all the cars here on our sine wave to see what body control's like. Unsurprisingly, it is impeccable. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. Yeah, so look, this car has adaptive damping and uh, the system works quite well. There is a noticeable difference between the drive modes. Then in addition to that, uh, to help with low speed maneuvers and that kind of thing, it actually has a really tight turning circle of under 12 meters and that's thanks to rear wheel steering. The rear wheels will actually turn in when you start putting in lock at low speed and it means that you can do things like U-turns and stuff like that without too many dramas. Now, uh, just as the rain starts falling, uh, we're gonna go across our bumpy road because we do this in every single car we test. This is representative of like the worst road in Australia and we do this at 90 k's an hour. And this basically just tests ride compliance and what this is like as a road car because according to Lambo, this is homologated for the road. I'm not gonna lie, it is firm um, and this is a shockingly bad road. Let's see what it's like over our condensed sine wave here. Here we go. It's not bad. <laughs> there you go. You can drive your Lambo down a very bumpy road if you need to. Now, what about your visibility? I'm not going to lie, it's not great. Um, down the front there, it's perfect. The windscreen's great, no dramas. Wing mirrors are nice and big, so you can clearly see sides of the car and anything down the side there as well. There is no blind spot monitoring, so you have to be super careful when you are changing lanes to do head checks and stuff. Visibility out the rear is literally non-existent. There are like holes there for light, and outside of that, I can't see anything. There's a roll cage and like a, an engine cover there that get in the way of everything, so you're not going to be seeing much out of there. Um, these steering wheel controls are interesting. This is, um, I've driven a Ferrari recently with, with these, but this is the first time I've driven a Lambo with these steering controls. You, so you put the indicator on by flicking that over. It's like a motorbike, so turn it off by pushing it in. And then the other way as well, you've got your wiper controls here too, which we're gonna need in a second. And it has basic cruise control as well, nothing sort of too fancy. And then controls here for changing the trip computer. Only problem is, um, if you are using this as a daily, there's no ability here to like change audio or anything. You have to take your eyes off the road, go all the way down here to press the volume control and then you can adjust the volume down here there's no real option to do it on the steering wheel and I think that's probably a bit of a miss if you're going to homologate a car for the road you need to be able to do road stuff like that and I think that um, they probably should have maybe foregone one of these switches uh, for a stalk and just put some of the controls that I need for the radio there as well so not a big deal but yeah obviously something they could have thought of now let's talk drive mode so STO is just the normal road mode Trofeo is the go fast mode and then Piaggia is rain mode, so I'm going to go down to Trofeo. Everything lights up there. It goes into manual mode as well. Wow, it is so stiff. Oh, that sound I would never get hold of. <laughs> the noise is ridiculous. I don't even know if you can hear me, but... Oh. This thing is out of control. Oh man, so it is sitting dead flat through these corners. The brakes have just immense bite. 
gearbox is nice and fast as well. Steering is just impeccable too. You would genuinely never pick this as a rear-wheel drive car. When it was cold, it was kind of understeering all over the place, but now that the tyres have a bit of warmth in them, it is just out of this world. All right, here comes our back straight. We're all onto that. Far out. Okay, here we go. camera to talk to you guys this thing is just on another level of just insanity oh, far out this is just out of control and the noise is just stupid <laughs> you what you can make electric cars as fast as you want you can plumb in all the stupid sounds that you want it will never replace the sound of this naturally aspirated v10 engine that is sitting literally right there as well oh man that is that is seriously seriously unreal absolutely unreal i love it one of the coolest things about this is if you think to the last, uh, the Performante, that was all-wheel drive. This is rear-wheel drive to mimic the race car. And I don't know, it just has a whole different vibe to it. So it is lighter due to that uh, all-wheel drive system disappearing and all the carbon, the lightweight windscreen really does pull all the weight out of it. I've driven a Performante before and it is an incredibly quick car and I think it's helped by that all-wheel drive system. In fact, it's quicker to 100 k's an hour than this is. So I think that stuff helps and it helps for handling as well because you can actually get a bit more traction out of a corner. This, when we started driving it today, it had a stack of understeer before the tyres warmed up and you're going to get that all the time with these uh, semi-slick tyres like they need a bit of heat before they warm up so that is where an all-wheel drive system really comes into its own so this does have a bit of a split personality before everything's warm it is a bit chaotic and all over the place whereas once everything is warm and you see that taco going all the way through to red line, it's just in another world altogether. I also love all this telemetry stuff and, and what you see here in terms of temperatures. That really helps you understand how far along you are in warming the car up and having it ready for road use. The tyre temperatures are great because when they went green, I actually had traction. So it does show you that that stuff works and it gives you a better indication of when you can actually go harder without sending yourself off into the bushes. Okay. This is the part I've been looking forward to. Uh, let's do a little bit of performance testing. We'll see if we can match the claims that Lambo has uh, for the STO. Got to keep in mind, this is rear wheel drive. It was a little wet earlier today, so I don't know how we're going to go for traction, but we'll give it a shot anyway. So I'm going to put it down into Trofeo. Uh, we're going to switch off stability control by pushing ESC off. Then to engage launch control, you basically hold the throttle and uh, the brake at the same time. It'll say thrust mode possible and then away we go. I'm going to manually shift gears as well because I don't think it will shift the gears in launch control um, and I don't really want to hit the limiter <laughs> at pace. So here we go. Uh, the official time is three seconds flat. This is rear wheel drive so I'll be amazed if it achieves that but we'll give it a crack anyway. Here we go. Oh that sounds so good. Here we go. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh my god, I forgot to mention that we were going to go all the way through to 120, but we absolutely eclipsed that. Wow, off the line, this thing hauls us, and it sounds incredible too, that was unreal. Um, I had no traction off the line though, so uh, obviously that's going to be an issue. 3.51 seconds with no traction and our 80 to 120. <laughs> Holy crap, 1.54 seconds for 80 to 120. I'm pretty sure that's the fastest we've ever tested here. That is unreal. Wow, that is unreal. So super impressed with that. Um, let's go back and do a break because according to Lambo, this stops from 100 to zero in just 30 meters. 30 meters so um, yeah let's go back we'll do a break from 100 and see if we can match that claim okay i'm tipping it won't be hard to get up to 100 here for our break so here we go i'll get it up to 100 we'll see if we can make that claim everything is secure here it is oh. <laughs> i cannot wait to see that footage played back because 
the, the fatness around my face was like trying to peel off. So let's see how that went. Far out. Um, okay, so 100 to zero. Ooh, 3.13 seconds and 35.9 meters. So 5.9 meters off the claim there. So, hmm. Uh, look, tires probably aren't warm, all that sort of stuff. I think that claim would have been achieved with warm tires and brakes, but um, look, still an impressive stopping distance nevertheless. If you do want to see how this compares to other cars that we've tested here before in the same uh, conditions, uh, have a look at the link in the description below. Okay, and the moment you've all been waiting for. <laughs> How fast will it go in reverse? I'll engage reverse there. Here we go. Oh, that was uneventful. 36 kilometers an hour. Okay, what an unreal experience. Um, look, I'm glad this exists because it's such a ridiculous car and it makes no sense for anyone to buy this because I think a lot of people that will buy it, they're not going to take it to the track. And look, if you do, good on you. I think, you know, all, all the power to you. But as something that you want to just sit in your lounge room at home and just look at, it is unreal. It turns so many heads. And look, Porsches are, are amazing. They're, they're great fun to drive and they're really good track weapons. But this just has another presence altogether. It is just in another league entirely. So let me know what you reckon in the comments section below. Do you think this is ridiculous? Would you buy one anyway if you won the lotto tomorrow? Have you bought one? If so, let me know. And let me know if you do take it to the track and, and if you have fun with it. So let me know in the comment section down below. If you did enjoy this video, please make sure you like it and you share it with your mates. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon as well. But until next time, take it easy.